Hey guys, Tim here. Today we're going to start working on the Media Center PC build I've been promising for a while. Uh, this is also, you could call this a home theater build. Uh, you can use you know, either Linux OS's out there uh, or Windows Media Center, which is what I'll be using. We're using the Fractal um, Node 605, which I think is you know one of the slickest cases on the market right now for Media Center PC. I think everybody if you know anybody that has one, go check it out because the build quality is absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's easily the best home theater PC case I've ever seen. So I've already taken out the screws for the drive cages. You have to take out both drive cages. We'll need those out later anyways to populate them with drives. And then there is a support bracket across the middle just for some structural rigidity. Because as you notice, this case has a lot of you know openings on the back. So the back panel, if you left this piece out, the back panel tends to be pretty weak. Um, just because it has so many holes in it. So now that we have that done, um, you can see inside the case here, we'll mount the five and a, or the, uh, I guess it is five and a quarter, but it's a, a laptop drive down here. I have all our front I.O. and two pre-populated fans. Um, I'm just going to go with the pre-populated fans for now and see if I actually need um, this extra fan or not. You know, just my, my media center area tends to not get real hot, but you know, you, you can still populate uh, a 120 here and then 280s or hmm, they might be 92, so I'd have to look. I usually don't populate these back slots. So, so anyways, we're going to move that aside for the time being. And we're going to start working on our MSI FM2 A77MA E35. There's a review of this up on my website, or I guess on the YouTube channel. So there's the board, and I think, personally, you know, for an MATX board, I really feel like the Trinity and the uh, A75, the FM2 chipsets that are out, are, you know, for media center PCs, I don't know how you can do much better. Um, this board is just ridiculously um, set up for you know, either like a home server build or a home media center build. It's just a phenomenal board at a phenomenal price. I mean, if you guys go check out the prices on this and like an A6 or A8 Trinity chip, I think you'll be very surprised at, you know, how reasonably you can put together a board. And, you know, I would recommend to everybody, you know, if you have a TiVo, if you have a DVR from your cable company, that you pay for, you should really look into building yourself a media center PC because you have to realize you're not going to pay a subscription fee with a Windows Media Center PC. So if you're talking, you know, $12.95 or $14.95 or $17.95 a month for a TiVo, in two years, you know, you could build a four or five hundred dollar uh, set-top box and in two years not counting the cost of that TiVo which was probably $199 or $299 in two years you will have paid the price difference and if you have a hard drive failure you're just gonna go buy a new hard drive you're not gonna go have to send the box back to TiVo and pay them some ridiculous fee to get a hard drive replaced or if something else goes wrong in the box you're not gonna have to you know go lugging back to your cable company you're just going to put in a new drive and, you know, worst case scenario is you reset up Windows. I mean, oh my gosh, if you're watching this channel, you probably know how to do that. So on these Trinity boards, you're going to find, I'll be honest with you, I didn't look at this ahead of time. Somewhere on here is the little golden corner. There it is right there. So there's a little triangle on that corner. We're going to take my A6-5400K. You find the little golden triangle on the corner there. And these still use you know the pin on the chip so you want to be really careful when you socket these in not to press them down too hard you just want to let it fall in you know make sure it's in there secure it's a much different mounting process you know this is the old school process 
whereas Intel has the pins in the socket now. Um, personally, I like this way better. I'm, you know, it's easier to bend a pin. However, it's also easier to know that you socketed everything correctly and that there isn't a pin bent. Um, so I do prefer uh, the older style chips. I guess maybe I'm old or something. You can make whatever jokes you like. So now we have, I'm just going to use, for now, I'm just going to use the stock cooler. I don't plan on overclocking this unless there's some reason that like it won't do 1080p well enough um, decoding. Uh, I'll overclock it if that happens and then I'll get an aftermarket cooler. But this chip is such a low power chip, um, the stock cooler plus the fans in the case should be more than enough to keep this board cool. Um, so I'm just going to use the stock thermal paste too. If I decide to put something on uh, after market, then I will do so at that time. And this just uses the standard, I haven't done this on an AMD in a while, so bear with me. Just uses the standard uh, AMD you know, mounting. So the nice thing there is that you don't have to uh, you know, add a mounting bracket to Go, it's on that side, and this side just clips on. Let's see that way. Yee. There we go. That side just clips on, and then it just tightens down like that, and she's on. And we're just going to plug in the. So I like to do this. I don't know how other people feel about it, but I like to put a, a slight bend in the cable. Uh, just because it makes it stay over top of the board. Uh, it's just personal preference really. You can do whatever you want. But notice how it makes it stay inside the board. Sometimes if you don't put a little twist in it, it'll, it'll hang out. And you might have a fan there with no uh, cover on it. So that's why I, do, I take that approach. So we're going to grab... Uh, where's the box? We're going to... Do what about every third build I forget to do, and that is put the back plate in the case. And for some reason, I am prone to forgetting to do this. And somewhere around here it is. That's what happens when your build area is too messy, I suppose. So I will be right back once I find the back panel. And we'll get to putting in the motherboard. Okay, just got the back panel. It's my only complaint with this motherboard actually is I really wish, you know, I get that this is a value oriented board from MSI. However, take the 50 cents and charge it to me and give me a better EM shielded backplate. Um, you know, when you, when you make an MATX board for that price, the usual person's going to use it in like a media center PC or something along those lines normally so not the end of the world but you know it'd be nice to have it color coded and I don't know, I'm just being picky at this point to be honest with you because for what I paid for that board you know I really I really can't complain you know if you're gonna do this build I highly recommend looking at the MSI boards um, I have Asus and almost everything else that I own if you guys watch my channel you know that already. So we'll get this popped in and secure. There we go. So the cables do have quite a few twist ties on them to make the installation a little easier. I'm going to undo all the twist ties and hang on to the twist ties because you never know you might want them for cable management. But I tend to like to, you know, just get the cables out of my way as much as I can just so it's easier to get the board in. And we're gonna find the motherboard standoffs, follow the instructions in the manual for uh, what positioning they go in, and we'll be right back. Hey okay, guys, so I went ahead and threw the, the board in there real quick. There's only six standoffs you put in. Um, there's no standoffs out front, but it is very stable. So, no big deal. Uh, this case, remember, can accept a full-length ATX board. 
So it does have seven PCI uh, brackets in the back. Um, so you can put a full size in this, which is you know extraordinary. The other thing I wanted to point out real quick was, you know, some case manufacturers build their cases so that there's like almost no room. You know, they they give you space for a fan, and they give you like almost no room to work to get it in or out or or work on it. Um, a ton of space. There's clearance even between you know the fan and the board that's in there. It's even got like height clearance. So you know, all in all, I just I'm continually impressed by this case. Uh, I think if you guys you know take a look at it too, you'll like it. In the next video, we'll cover uh, hard drive installation, the uh, Blu-ray player installation, and the Seton uh, card installation. And then in the final video, I will go over uh, setting up and configuring uh, both the Seton and Windows Media Player and maybe some mods if you guys would like to see um, Certain Media Center PC mods tried in the video. Let me know and I'll I'll see I tend to be a my movies user personally But let me know and I can take a look and see if I want to incorporate any other uh, components into the videos Thanks for watching. This is Tim for Timmy Tech TV, and we'll see you next time